I, like I said, I, I was born to stand out. I was always that guy that goes his own way. I'm not gonna go the way that everybody else is gonna go. Like a lot of people thought back when I was starting out, like, yeah, I can make a career out of this. Now, look at everything I've accomplished, everything that, I, that I'm still going to accomplish. Like the life I built, like, again, I take so much pride in the fact that I did it my way with my two hands. This is my third camp in, I mean, I've been, I've been in camp basically since February and it's August. So it's, it's very physical, but it's very mental as well. And it's very taxing on the body. It's very taxing on, on my family too. Like the sacrifice that I, I'm taking time away from them. I want them to see that, that, that it's gonna be worth it. And I need to make it worth it for them in the end. I'm one win away from a million dollars. So I'm looking at this one, like burn all the boats. This is the one, I gotta win this one. I'm not really focused on that, on that million dollar one right now. I'm focused on this one because this is the one that gets me to that million dollars. That million dollars is life changing money. It's gonna change my life. It's gonna change my daughter's life. It's gonna change my wife's life. It's gonna change the people around me's life. There is no greater motivation than that than, than, than changing my family's lives and then my extended family's life as well. I, I, I want this win. I want this, this championship win more than anything. Got a little warm now, having to pick up the speed a little bit. Pick the tempo, side throw the jab cross. Again, you can mix it up. They know you're throwing it to the head. Sometimes you throw it down to the chest and the body. Side with the kicks. Get the kicks out quick. Don't half-ass the kicks and then eat their punch. Get your kicks out fast, get back to your stance. So I first fell in love with the sport, kind of like a love at first sight kind of moment for me. I saw an episode of UFC Unleashed uh, back when I was in like seventh grade. Fast forward to ninth grade. One of my friends is like, oh, I found this gym. And uh, they do kickboxing and, and, and like jiu-jitsu. I was like, oh cool, what's it called? It's like Tiger Shulman's. And back then it was called Tiger Shulman's Karate. So I was like, I thought that's a karate school. They, they do kickboxing and jiu-jitsu. He's like, I thought so too, but yeah, we could just do the trial and, and just see how we like it. I did my first jiu-jitsu class and I was like, whoa. I felt like I found my purpose at such a young age and I've never had that feeling with anything else I've ever done. Good, that's it, he's touching him. He's not blasting him, but he's hitting DJ. Don't force the kick. Defend the one, two, first and foremost, DJ. You mean fakes too, double jab, yep. Yes, 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 yes. Much better right, switch it up. Good, don't wait for him to kick the whole time though. Fuck his kicks, throw your one two, all right? Keep going, keep going. Yes, yes, you're trying to land that one two, land that one two. Don't worry about his counter, it's all right. It's gonna happen sometimes, it's habit. Time, perfect, uh, no, perfect, that was awesome. That was exactly how I wanted it on both sides. You guys got it? Any questions? I just don't wanna see side the student jab cross. I don't wanna see you guys doing this. Because you're worried about him throwing the kick the whole time and you're doing this the whole time, right? If you're not getting kicked, that means you're not even trying to do the jab cross. You should be getting kicked at least at least five times in that drill. You guys got it? Any questions? All right, so stand up. One, three, one, two, three. So I found out back in uh, middle school that um, I had scoliosis and it was, uh, it's, it's very common. A lot of people have it. It's a curvature of your spine. It was about a 24 degree curve of my spine. And then uh, they told me, we'll just monitor it, we'll watch it and uh, it should be fine. And then fast forward a little bit more, I find out it went from a 24 degree curve to a 49 degree curve when I hit my growth spurt. My spine grew like a question mark. They were like, oh, all right, this is progressively gonna get worse. Doctor told me that I needed to get surgery and I was like, oh my God, a spine surgery and being 15 years old. And I'm like devastated to hear that. But then he also tells me, like, I know you like to train and stuff, like do, do, do that kind of UFC stuff. He's like, but you're probably not gonna be able to do that anymore. And I'm like, what, what like that, never? He's like, yeah, probably never. I start crying. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty hysterical. Like, not just the fact that I that I won't be able to train, but the fact that I'm gonna have to get surgery. I'm terrified. There is a chance that they mess up and you can be paralyzed. That that is a chance you're taking with surgery. And he's telling me this. I'm like, it felt like my world was crashing down. He's telling me that I can't, I can't do what I just, I just found this like seven, eight months ago. And now you're gonna tell me I can't do it anymore. I'm like, I start crying. And then I sit back and I start thinking about it. It's kind of like a movie scene where he's talking and I'm not really hearing him. I'm just kind of in my own head thinking about. The fact that he told me I can't train anymore. And I'm like, there's no way I'm taking no for an answer. So I just wiped my face and I was like, okay, let's do what we gotta do, but I'm coming back.
we have uh, about four and a half weeks left. So, um, yeah, three more weeks of training, hard training. We're gonna go right into sparring. After sparring, we're gonna go right back into technique, boxing training, and then uh, finish off with some bag work. Keep going, let's go. That's it, put that together a little quicker. And when he goes to box back, that's when you lure him into the boxing match, then you take out the leg. I think when you go through something like he did, where you know he had scoliosis pretty badly, and the doctors told him he would never be able to do any athletics, that pushed him. That's the drive that he needed to become a fighter. So I guess he flipped the switch right then and there that he was gonna be a fighter in life. And then he ended up being a fighter in the cage. Um, he's one of the toughest guys I've ever met. He's not out there to play. He says, that guy's out there to hurt me. So I'm gonna hurt him and I'm gonna do it as quickly as I can so I can get back to my kids and my wife. That's his attitude. You know he's coming back to that counter. Well, then boom, then hit it, right? And get back to boxing. When he counters, hit it hard and hit the same spot. You hit it many times, I want you to hit it more, okay? Good move, right? That's a great kick Off right the left there. kick, that was nice. Go back to lefty. How does it feel to see your brother win? No, it's the best feeling. You can feel, what it just feel the weight off your shoulders, it's pretty crazy. How about on the opposite spectrum, like what about losing? It's gut-wrenching, it's not, it's more, it's way more than a fight. Always, everyone's out. Ah, it's just a fight. It's never just a fight. It, it's the worst. The highest highs and lowest lows. Like I just, literally just heard him say that. So it's different from any other sport. You know, when you're putting like your family on your back, kind of, and you know, and you're going to war. So whoever comes out of that, you know, that's the way we look at it. It is just a fight at the end of the day. You know, he does have a beautiful family to go home to, and that's the real win. That's always the real win, right there. Having a family now three daughters, a wife, um, it takes a lot, especially the way, the way the season is, it takes a lot of time away from them. So it's a, it's a huge sacrifice, because time is something you never get back. So to take time away from them, I gotta make this worth it in the end. Yes, yeah, so my wife, Veronica, she sacrificed so much. I can't even put into words how much she sacrificed. Um, obviously, she's watching me go out there, and I know for me, like watching like my, my teammates, is it's so hard for me so i can't imagine being in her shoes watching her husband the father of her kids go out there and especially the way i fight like everybody knows the way i fight she sacrificed her mental her mental sanity at some at some points but then aside from that like she's a mom she's a stay-at-home mom when i'm away for fights and i and i i can't do as much as when i'm outside of training camp she, she's picking up that slack i hate to say it but yeah I, I do slack at times when it comes to that because i'm run down from training i'm giving everything i have in training and i'm taking away from from my family time so she's made up for that in ways that I can't even begin to express my gratitude for. So again, I have to make this worth it, not just for myself, but 100% worth it for my wife and for my three daughters. Just got done Friday, I'm gonna be closer. Now we're gonna sit down with head coach, Sean Ron Schulman, go over some film, some game plan for uh, this fight on the 23rd. Trying to get his kicks in at that point, right? Yeah. See when he switched? He yeah. kicked so much harder. Right? That's what I'm saying. And that's what we want. First round, I want you to hit his leg many times. This dude's just striking with him. He's gonna expect you to try to do that. That's when you body lock him. When he's like, like or yeah, or where he's got your, yeah. you against, or even yeah. when you're just, when he's forehead, he's trying to throw these body shots, body lock. that's when you body lock. Yeah, he's, cause he's gonna expect you to be like lock. this guy and try to, you know, turn. yeah. So when he body lock and you, either if you have him against the cage or he has you against It's good if he's hands yeah. down here, he's yeah, gonna he, look for the underhook. When he goes for the underhook, you lock that arm in. I like it. Smart. All right, we get the job done. Let's do it. Let's do it. Just finished up watching some film. I mean, I felt confident confident before, but I feel even more confident now, especially like watching the tape, breaking it down, look where, looking where he's weak and where I'm strong, and uh, seeing where I can exploit those weaknesses. Uh, confidence is at all time high right now. Game plan's gonna work to a T. So two weeks out. Headed to the city now to do a bar stool sport. So it's been back this podcast, hype the fight up a little bit, get people more excited about it. I mean, not that you need to, because the fight speaks for itself. It's going to be a banger, but I'm excited to go out there, get it hyped up even more. We do have Shane Burgos <laughs> back in studio after his last fight. We talked to him before the last fight. Now we've got him again before August 23rd. We're going to be headlining a night at MSG against Clay Collard. 
It's a hell of a fight. Yeah. I'm glad that you're in this position. After your last fight, we were worried you weren't going to be in this position. And then there was a little shakeup with the PFL and everything, and you're back. Yeah, man. Uh, stars are aligned. Um, it worked out in, in my favor, obviously. I'm back. Um, I'm going to make the absolute most op- of this opportunity. It's uh, in my freaking backyard. It's in New York. It's my fourth time fighting in New York. My fo- oh, Sorry, my fourth f- time fighting in the the garden yeah my eighth time fighting in new york i haven't lost here i once asked rampage jackson um how many of me would it take to kick your ass in a fight so how many of me do you think it would take to kick your ass see i'm not slamming any of you i waste way too much energy i'm looking for the one hit of quitters so okay I'd say seven. I'd say seven. that was a yeah. nice seven. seven you wanted to say six and you were like i'll be nice to this I, guy so rampage i'll give him seven six, so i gotta one up rampage fighting for the million dollars and means the absolute world to me it's gonna change my life change my family's life but this is the fight. This is the one that everyone wants to see. This is the one that I'm focused on. This is the fight that, in my mind, is the million dollar fight. Your metabolism's probably like, your body looks like, yeah, yeah it's like that. Yeah. And then having to go fight, 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 like with the seasons, the way this shit is. I know. Like, I only have like a week to be able to eat what I want to eat. So, so in my mind, like I got a week, I'm eating like 10,000 calories a day. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, like, every, 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 I'm like, so you're just eating. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, what's yeah, in yeah. the house? I don't even like this. Fuck it. Eat it. I'm eating. You're not going to eat it soon, so just eat it now. <laughs> Michael Phelps diet. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's terrifying. Yeah, it's dead. Jeez, it's like it's junk calories. Which is so crazy because you probably burn like training and yeah, but, but insane amount. The week after the fight is my week off. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm just yeah, sitting yeah. on my ass eating like a fat fucking. <laughs> right after that, I'm like, all right, die back. Now, let's go start training again. Yeah, so just finished up Barcelona Sports here in the city. I'm about to head back home, but man. It was good, got me hyped up, got me ready to go. Two weeks out from today, August 23rd, do not miss it, the main event for, the re- for a reason. This is the fight that everyone wants to see, and now it's going down. All or nothing, kill or be killed, and coming, coming for that fucking win. My favorite part is I, I did this shit my way. Like I said, I was gonna do this in high school. I told my friends I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be an MMA fighter, and that's how I'm gonna make my living. And I fucking did it. Like, I mean, a lot of people talk about it, they, they, they say it, and then life happens, and they're like, right, let me just get a nine to five. I said, fuck that, man. I burned all the boats. I had no backup plan. This is It was either this or I want to be broke for the rest of my life. And um, I went out there and I, I made it fucking happen with my bare hands, with my blood, my sweat, my tears, my dedication. Uh, I did this shit. I mean, there's nobody that can do it for me. I had to put the work in. I, I did it and I did it my way. That's the one thing. The other thing is, if I want to get to this side, I'm going to hold it here. Because that arm is free, this has to be protected. I'm here to make my turn. I don't want to go across and leave this side open. Okay? Yeah. There you go. So what we're doing here is we're trying to, oh, we're trying to get in here, and I want to control that. I want to, okay. I want to somehow get there. Here. Here. Oh. I want to get here so I can keep striking. People ask me, what makes Shane so good? It's his head, he's a warrior. He goes out there to fight. It don't matter who's in front of him, he's gonna give it all he's got and leave it out there. And you know, even a couple fights ago, right? He was sick and he threw up during the weight cut. And um, I don't know, you had like, what, flu? Yeah, the fever oh, the entire week has to do with weight cuts, doing that. I mean, the weight cut is torture. But if you're sick, it's even worse. And he didn't say a word to me till after the fight. He won the fight, and he was just laying there at the end. That's when I. That's when I found out. I found out. So that's the kind of mentality he has. And he told me, I said, why didn't you tell me? He's like, because I knew I could beat him even on my worst day, and it was my worst day. <laughs> what the heck, you know? Because being a fighter is not just physical. There's a lot of people out there with good technique, but the difference is the mentality that you go in there with. And he's got the mentality. He's got a huge fight coming up. This is the playoffs. When he wins this fight, he'll be in the finals. So we're one week out from Wayans. Just finished my uh, last real hard push today. Got another one tomorrow. Not as hard, a little bit lighter. But I'm feeling great physically and mentally. I feel the best I've ever felt. Can't wait. We got seven days till Wayans. So that's really what I'm looking forward to. That's the hard part right there. And the fun part is next Wednesday. As hard as this is, this is my choice and it gives me so much in return. 
uh, it's a beautiful life I live because of the hard work that I put in with my blood, sweat, and tears of my my body and doing this, all this sacrificing, the, the, the struggle, the all the hardships, the, this actual moment right now, I haven't really eaten much today. I'm about to start the weight cut. It sucks, it's brutal, it's mentally exhausting. It's a lot easier to go work a nine to five, but I just wasn't built for that. I like the, the road less traveled. I've been saying that for a while. So if I had a green two, a yellow two, and a you red two, I'd put all three of them down. Oh shit. There's both, there's both, there's both. You can't stack on your own cards either? I don't think you can. I don't no, know. I've never played like that, but you can't stack on your it's own cards. Big, what do you mean? If you draw and skip? Yeah, yeah. draw and skip. You can't draw you two. Need, you just said you'd never even play the game. Everything has led me to where I am now. Uh, I'm blessed, man. This is a beautiful life I live. Yeah. God's given me so much, and even when it gets hard, even when right, like right now, I'm, when I'm starving and sucked out and suffering, I still choose it over and over again. Yo, he definitely has a red, bro. Look at his feet. He's like this. <laughs> oh, no. Damn, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, you're eating shit. That was so My bad. tears going down, down, down his eyes. No color. All right, buddy. For most people, this would seem like a home stretch, but this could quantify as one of the hardest parts of the week. Yeah, it's definitely the hardest part of the, of the entire fight camp is the, the weight cut. Fight, that's the fun part, but this part is the, this is the part that sucks. This is the part that nobody looks forward to. We're going to do what we have to do to get the job done, and this is just part of the job. This is just the part you have to do before you get to do the fun part. Wednesday night's the fun part. i got to earn that part and make the weight tomorrow. This is what I do while I cut weight. Check that out. First try. Jeez, crazy, but there's so much more we could do in our bike business. We're at 106.7. Oh, man. It feels hot. And then how long do you keep them in here the first round for? So we'll do 15 minute rounds. We'll start the timer once he started sweating. So uh, this first round will be about 20 minutes. And then every round in the tub after that will be 15 minutes. We'll keep him in the wrap for about. I'd say 30, 45 minutes as long as he's still sweating in there. You know, we can use that time to recover, relax, you know, kind of kick his feet up and watch some more TV and, uh, you know, just essentially prepare his body for the next round of heat exposure. Four minutes. Five minutes left. Four minutes. He makes it so much harder. We get turned off. So the past two fights, first round, I run over to, to Mike, where's Shane's family? Yeah. And then I find him, and he's already standing up, like, sweat coming yeah. down his head, like, <laughs> Shane! <laughs> like, well, last one was good, the last one, I didn't lose my voice for the main, for the, for the main well, fight. Because you weren't yelling, you were booing the Japanese guy. Yeah. I, I was heard more than the Japanese guy than, than I did for the OAM one. Dude, they sat us right behind OAM's corner. As, oh, yeah. as he's there talking shit, I'm like, oh, bro. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah? Yeah, you might want to put a towel on. It's the a leak? Yeah. Yeah, yeah take, it off, stand off, take it off first. You go wrap in that towel. So, you know, yeah. so we're just wrapping up this second round here in the bath and wrap uh, with Shane. We're going to check his weight uh, once the timer goes off. Oh, <laughs> three, two, one. Boom, done. Oh, fuck, yeah. Oh, oh my god, that's gross. <laughs> I want to ask a question, but I don't even want to ask it. You know what I want to say, right? Oh. <laughs> Alright, would you, not, not a would you rather, but how much to put your mouth under that? Yes. Oh. Zero. How much? There's not a How much money? To what? To I lift it, you. <laughs> You have to drink it? How much? Uh, yeah, a shot of it. A uh, shot? Two million. Two, million. two million, you do it? Two million. Two million. He's a fucking filthy slut. That's disgusting, bro. <laughs> bro yeah. Yeah. Filthy two slut million. for real, bro. You went there with two million? Easy. Shut up. I might. Whoever said they went there with two million? Our goal was 160 pounds. He was about 160 on the dot. Still sweating a bit. Uh, hair wet. You know, uh, wearing some wet underwear. So he's about to take a cool shower. Um, we'll give him about a half a pound of fruit. So we should have, have about three and a half to four in the morning. Uh, hopefully he floats uh, about a pound. Um, and we'll go at it uh, one more time tomorrow morning until we get down to 156 pounds, weigh in, and start rehydrating. Just some little pineapple watermelon like chunks. Oh. Nice and frozen. Yes. I eat the whole thing? Yeah, that's a half a pound. Everything. Oh. 
Oh, oh I heard it. Oh, oh my god. Last it right there. Boom, let's fucking go. Perfect, baby. Perfect. Good shit. Let's go. So officially on wait. Hard part's done. Let's go make it official in like an hour. And have fun play tomorrow night. Burgos. One fifty six even. One fifty six even. For Mr. Shane Burgos. One fifty six even. Our part officially done. Rehydrating. Feeling good. Man, that's the fight before the fight. Done with it. Not to think about it anymore. Until the next one, until the finals, but I decided to mind now, all focused. The task at hand, tomorrow night it's going down. That was the fucking hard part, tomorrow's the fun part. Welcome PFL Fight fans, Madison Square Garden in New York City. Tonight it's all about playoff semifinals in the welterweight division. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna go home? And who's gonna progress? Step forward, step, step forward on that. Ball in the hole for him sometimes when he kicks it. Ball in the hole for him, yes. Nice. Right to it, right to it. We walk in two minutes! That good? Crowd, take all that shit. Calm. All right, Mr. Burgos. Your time to shine, big dog. Let's get it. All night long. Rolling in. Shane. Making their way to the PFL Smart Cage. Fighting out of the blue corner. Shane Burgos. You hear the love from the crowd for Shane Burgos. He's a New Yorker. Came up through the local fight scene here. He has never lost in his home state. Shane Burgos looking to make a statement here. And in the red corner, Clay Collard. Cassius Clay Collard, feeling a different kind of energy from the crowd. <laughs> More big time supporters of Shane Burgos. Collard though, spent some time doing professional boxing, just snatching the undefeated records away from rising prospects. He was never the fan favorite in those buildings. He loves this type of environment. Fighting out of Monroe, New York! Stellar main event matchup, Clay Collard in the red, Hurricane Shane Burgos in the gray. Chance of let's go Shane. Raining down here inside the theater at Madison Square Garden. Beautiful stinging inside low kick there from Burgos. Just upsets the balance of Collard. Burgos told us he was going to kick away at Collard's legs. And look at that again. Oh, big right hand to the body by Collard. Both of these guys willing to play the long game in this fight. Oh, lovely inside low kick. But here's the leg. Oh, oh, big left hook landed for Clay Collard with the right oh. hand behind it. Oh. He's got Hurricane Shane Hurt! Do not blink as this first round comes to a close. Let's go, Shane! If the first round is any indication of this main event, you are in for a treat here as round number two begins with a push kick from Shane Burgos. There you yes. go, Gas! Yeah, Gas! Yes, yes. Yes. Right yes! Nobody! Spinning back this miss, the hook landed. The numbers just stacking up for both of these fighters. High volume fight as we expected. Oh, the right hand from Collins. Nice right hand. Nice. Oh, down for the cross kick. The front leg goes out from under him, but Clay Collins for the second time in this fight. Rolls through it and is back on his feet. Oh, the left hook. Left hook. Big left hook. Get to the game, get to the game. Now Burgos rolls him 
back to his feet. Must feel like he's done enough to win this round already. And I want to see a third. We will oh. next. 300 strikes thrown already in this fight. Unreal. The smart thing to do for Burgos right now is to move back, move away from Clay Collard, and force him to keep planting his weight on that lead leg. Burgos is playing the game of Clay Collard right now, standing in the pocket and trading. Go on, go on. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. Back to it, back to it. Double up. Yeah. You can move. Shane Burgos having a lot of success here in round number three, but will it be enough? the decider in this fight. Collard's had a lot of trouble moving his feet at all. He's thrown 416 strikes in this fight, Randy. Oh, there's a nasty inside leg kick again from Shane Vigo. Body shot rip, left hook again from Clay. Right hand the high kick from Vigo. Give me two more rounds of this. <laughs> He's yeah. out of here. Official Cassius Clay Collard earns his spot in his first ever PFL championship match. It just stings, man. Uh, so many people came out to watch me win and just come up short. It fucking sucks. But at the end of the day, this is just a blip in my life. No matter what, I'm a winner at life. I, got, I get to go home to my three beautiful babies. I get to go home to my wife. My family still loves me, my team, my friends. Like, so as much as there's things to lose, I, I still won because I have, I have so much love. And, I have so much love back in home that I get to go home to. What pisses me off more than, than anything is just, I couldn't see myself obviously until I got out of the cage and looked in the mirror. Now I gotta go see my kids and they're gonna be, they're gonna be a little bit scared because daddy's face is a little bit uh, banged up. So, but I do this for them. I'm able to give them a good life with what I do. So I take a lot of pride in that, but this is the part that, uh, as much as I love being a dad, this is the part of being, how about, the part of being a dad that sucks is this, at being a fighter is this part here, when uh, you lose. I know, I know when I was younger, uh, my dad was just like Superman, like nobody can be my dad up, so I don't want her to think that I'm not Superman anymore, you know what I mean? You're always gonna be Superman, but I'm, It's easy to just stay in bed and to do the easy things and to just stay in your comfort zone. But the road less traveled is gonna get you so much further in, in the end. And do you wanna just be another guy in the rat race? Do you want, is that what you want? I don't want that. The comfort zone is gonna get me nothing. Do you wanna be the 99% or do you wanna be the 1%? I wanna be the 1%. You can go ahead and you can be the, the 99% or you can step out of your comfort zone because that's where life takes place. In your comfort zone, nothing great ever happens. When you're Living outside of it, it, it's scary. It's terrifying. My entire career is basically, you're going into a cage, you're not very comfortable, you know what I mean? Like, it's not a comfortable thing. So for me to willingly put myself in those positions, like, I don't have to do this anymore. I, re I really don't have to do this. I do this because I love it, but I also do it because it puts me in an uncomfortable position. And that's where life happens, that's where life takes place, and that's where greatness comes from. That's where, when you're sitting back on your deathbed, you're gonna remember those times that you were not comfortable, but you made it happen. Even if you fail, dare to be great. Those guys that are gonna look back and judge you, like, who cares? How you feel about yourself is gonna, is, it means the most. Even though I, I, I've lost before, it's it's okay. Like, I, I, you either learn or you win. That's how, that's kinda how I look at it, but I tried. I tried my damn best and I I dare to be great. Now that's, that's kinda how I approach life. It doesn't always work out the way you want it to work out, but it will always work out the way it's going to work out, the way it's supposed to work out. You got one life to live, make it a life worth living.